Hello, my name is Thomas Dimitrovich. In this session, we're going to talk about how to selectively coordinate fuses for a transformer application. The example that we'll use is a 30 kVA transformer with a 480 volt line to line primary voltage and a 208 volt line to line secondary voltage. We will select all of the fuses that you see here to properly protect this 30 kVA transformer and achieve a selectively coordinated system. The first step is to calculate the primary and secondary full load amps of the transformer and use that information to determine the maximum fuse size for the primary and secondary mains for this transformer. This will be based upon National Electrical Code requirements. The primary full load amps is calculated as 36.08 amps at 480 volts. The secondary full load amps is calculated as 83.27 amps at 208 volts. We use table 450.3b from the National Electrical Code to determine the maximum size fuses for primary and secondary mains. The maximum size of the primary overcurrent protective device is 36.08 amps multiplied by 2.5, or 90 amps. The maximum secondary main overcurrent protective device is 83.27 amps multiplied by 1.25, which is 104 amps. We know we can't purchase a 104 amp fuse, so we can go to the next higher standard overcurrent protective device size, which is a 110 amp fuse. The standard overcurrent protective device sizes can be found in Article 240 of the National Electrical Code. Table 240.6a from National Electrical Code version 2017 is your reference. This gives you the standard ampere ratings for fuses and inverse time circuit breakers. For fuse applications, we do not have to calculate short circuit currents. We know we are not going to exceed the 200,000 amp interrupting rating of the fuse, and selective coordination with fuses relies solely on ratio tables. The only tricky math that we're going to have to use is to reflect the secondary branch fuse amp rating to the primary via the turns ratio. This is the fuse selectivity ratio table. I'm going to make the call of using the TCF fuse in this application because it has the full range of ampacity up to 100 amps that is needed for this application. And the TCF is a great solution providing time delays we need for inrush currents and current limitation for reduced incident energy values. Per this selective coordination table, I know that all I need to do is maintain a 2 to 1 ratio between the upstream line side and downstream load side fuse. The first fuse we select is the branch fuse downstream of the transformer. Those are fuses F1 through F4. These devices are typically selected based upon the loads they supply. They will be our given starting point. We would select the largest device in the panel branch feeder location and ensure selectivity with the upstream devices. Anything smaller in that panel will selectively coordinate. The largest in this example is 20 amps, so that's where we'll begin. The main in this panel is our first selection based upon selectivity goals. Because of the ratio tables, we know that this main fuse, fuse F5, can be anything from a 40 amp to a 110 amp fuse. Selecting the primary fuse, fuse F6, will have to address the different voltage levels between secondary and primary of this transformer. To ensure we maintain the 2 to 1 ratio, we must reflect the secondary TCF 20 amp fuse to the primary via the turns ratio. The 20 amp secondary fuse is calculated as a 9 amp primary fuse as shown here. We get this number by multiplying 20 amps by the secondary voltage and divide that by the primary voltage of the transformer. To maintain a 2 to 1 ratio, the primary fuse, fuse F6, has to be greater than or equal to 2 times the reflected fuse current value. The secondary fuse reflected to the primary is 9 amps. If I multiply that by 2, I get 18 amps. The next fuse size is 20 amps. The main fuse, fuse F6, can be a 20 amp fuse or greater, up to the maximum amp rating permitted by the National Electrical Code, which is 90 amps. This provides a lot of flexibility to the engineer for protecting the transformer. The only limitation that you have in selecting this primary fuse is the National Electrical Code maximum and the inrush currents of that transformer. In selecting these fuses, we really simplified the life of the individual who had to select the protection for a transformer meeting the code requirements and achieving selective coordination. We did not have to do any short circuit calculations. We simply maintained a ratio of 2 to 1 between downstream and upstream fuses. We achieved our goal of selective coordination. This solution is valid for the life of the system regardless of the changes in, this, in short circuit current. Thank you for taking time to talk about this technical topic.